What's going on everyone? MC Andrew Love back on your screen and your speakers one more time. And welcome to another edition of Let's Chat and Jam. In this episode, I speak with a brother out of Manhattan, New York City, baby. His name, David Sriro. They call him the ambassador of the arts. Check out this interview we did right now. What's going on everybody? MC Andrew Love back on your screen and your speakers one more time with another edition of Let's Chat and Jam. In this episode, I'm speaking with a dope brother. This brother's from everywhere. He's from New York City. He's from all the way out there, European land. He's everywhere. His name is David Cerebro. And this brother here is the ambassador of the arts. If that's not what I said, that's what they said. So without further ado, award-winning, David Cerebro. Hello, my brother. How are you? Good, man. How are you doing? What have I'm you so, been up to? I'm so honored to be with you again and so delighted. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be on your wonderful show. I'm a huge fan of you. So I'm really, really honored. Thank you so much for the opportunity. No, I'm a huge fan of yours, man. Oh. You are the ambassador of the arts, man. Oh, you're too kind. No. You, 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 are, <laughs> you, you are the guy that's behind the scenes and in front of the camera. You do everything. There's nothing in entertainment that you have not tried to master yet. You see. I mean, you go with, you do directing, you do producing, you do uh, playwriting because you write your own scripts. And you also are the one that has to uh, cast for your members of your place. So you are casting director too. You do everything, man. There's nothing you have not accomplished in your career and you're still achieving and you keep getting awards after awards after awards, man. That's called hard work, sacrifice. That's what it is you do. And man, I'm a fan of yours and I'm humbled to have known you, brother. Oh, my brother. Well, thank you very much. I want you to write my eulogy. You know, <laughs> if everything, anytime something happens, like I want you to write exactly what you said, you know, <laughs> no, you're, you're way too kind, you know, but I, I always love to work and, and to try new things. And uh, this last challenges of COVID brought me to, to try new things and, and I'm, it's starting to pay off and I'm so, 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 so honored, really. I, I can say maybe this COVID has been a blessing for a lot of artists in disguise because it brought out our entrepreneurial bag. Like, okay, now that's not working. We got to do something different. And yeah, I'm digging the vibes, man. Uh, I found myself during this pandemic and finding myself allowed me to find you guys. I, mm. I found really dope and talented artists across the globe, not just here in America, but everywhere. Mm. I've been to Germany. I've been to England. I've been to Africa. And I'm planning on going to Saudi Arabia one day online, of course. And I really enjoy what I'm doing, but I enjoy talking to people such as yourself who have all this talent and you have a fan base too. Your fan base is huge. Every oh, time, sweet. every time I, I I I see you post something, people then put in the comments, "Oh, how they love your music! How they love your shows! They love your plays! They love everything you're doing because you're I, doing." I pay I pay all these people to write these <laughs> kind things. You know, <laughs> it costs me a lot of money, but I, <laughs> that's not true. I know, but you're so sweet. You're very sweet. Nah, nah, I'm not just the sweet one. I'm, I'm just telling you what I see out here, man. And oh, I, man. I'm a man about town, but I know talent when I see it a mile away. And you oh. are one of the most talented brothers I've ever come across. Oh, brother. Thank you, my man. When did you realize? Same for you. Oh, well, I appreciate it. When did you realize you had a passion for the arts? Well, it's, it started with music when I was, uh, I think, eight or nine years old, and I started to be on the piano. Actually, I have even pictures when I was like four or five um, on the piano, but 
from what I can remember, was really around eight, nine years old that I started to play with piano. And actually, I didn't have a great childhood in the sense that uh, I was always, you know, all the kids didn't like me, always had a fight, and, and I was always alone, not talking to anybody, et cetera, et cetera. So I was, when I, was see, when I would sit on the piano and press any keys and do some music, then I felt I was communicating with somebody. So that was for me, you know, um, uh, how that passion started originally. And then um, after Step by Step, the piano uh, was for me my instrument. And, uh, and I realized that I was not necessarily the best, but I was good to communicate uh, when I was playing on the piano. Because it's one thing, even when you're singing, to be a good singer, but can you communicate your singing? Can you communicate your your emotions to the audience? These are two different things. Like um, a host is everything for almost every job, you know. And then, um, then after singing started to come up a little bit by accident. Then theater, then uh, then musicals, then Broadway, and then putting shows together uh, right away, and uh, and then putting records, everything started to be, I would say, a succession of, uh, of, I think, a natural line. Okay, that's awesome, man. Now I want to dive into your show, The Culture News. Can you tell me, and I've always wanted to know this since I was a guest on there a few times, mm. where did this come from, man? Why did you start that? Well, I... It stayed on the idea that I wanted to uh, talk to other artists and to promote the work also of other artists because I never saw uh, other artists as competitors. You know, I saw them as, you know, part of the family and part of being uh, together and, and creating together. So um, I there were some artists who were at the beginning um, performing in my productions for almost for free you know <laughs> and i was like how can i help them out and and i you know this is how it started and then the other thing is i i got this partnership with iheart radio also where i was able to uh they kindly agree to host uh my uh my show and interviewing people after the other and then next thing i know after i think two or three months my email was on the database of all the PR that you can find in America, in the UK. So uh, I started to be bombarded, like literally to this day, I think I receive about 500 uh, demands per day, uh, emails, press release, new artists, uh, everything. And this being so really um, rewarding because... I met artists that I would have never heard of if they wouldn't have reached out for an interview of, or uh, uh, reach out that I play their music or, or, you know, and some of them became really close friends. Some of them actually hired me for the stuff. And what happened, by example, uh, for one great artist, she's Grammy Award nominated, uh, Malou Beauvoir. She uh, originally, her PR team submitted her album uh, to be on my show, and I really loved her album. It's like African music, but with the little popish stuff. It's really she has her own, really her own color, her own style, and and I loved it. And we kept in touch. And then um, one day I was doing Scarface, a new Broadway musical. I'm I'm, I'm preparing now. I just finished the cast album recording, and then I said, Malu, I need you in the in the recording. And, and she, she came to my, to my place, to my studio, and we did a demo. And I was like, listen, I don't care what you say. I want you on that record. And uh, so, you see, it, I prob maybe I wouldn't have heard about her because, you know, how life is. We, we're already busy doing our own stuff. So, and, but the information came to me, and then I really wanted her. And she's one of the greatest singer most professional I have ever heard in my life, you know? So, uh, so that, that's one of the great benefits that, that came and, uh, and you meet amazing people like yourself, you know, so I'm, I'm all for it, you know? 
Yeah, um, man, that, that's a, a really cool thing. And if you say she's dope and she's one of the greatest singers you ever heard, that means a mountain of platinum to me because you are the ambassador of the arts. So you oh, know no. <laughs> all good talent when you see it, man. That is awesome. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Who are your greatest influences? Oh, I will say, so for the opera, I will tell you Placido Domingo. Um, then there are so many, uh, so many artists. Today, there are so many. Back in the days, um, you would know Barry White, Michael Jackson. You would have only a handful of them because they were the ones that you were uh, that you were the most acquainted that whose music would really cross the Atlantic when I was in Paris and I grew up in Paris. But now there are so many artists that come your way, you know, so many independent artists. And even in, you know, the, 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 the genre have crossed so much, you know, in a hip hop song, we can have a, uh, an American hip hop song. You can have a, a verse in Spanish. You can have uh, so many um, artists from different culture that I, wouldn't have been able to to hear if there wouldn't be that cross of genres. So it's it's really really there are so 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 many. I cannot even uh, I cannot even tell you. But I get inspired by by people's story, by people's success. By um, by example, I just finished a documentary about Eli Tahari, uh, fashion designer, and uh, now the the documentary is going through film festivals. And, um, and his story inspired me so much, you know, like, uh, that's one of the things where I'm like, I think I've done something great. You know what? I can achieve way, way more because he achieved way, way more. So these people always are like to you, wow, that's the kind of things that I want to, to look up to for sure. That's cool, man. We got a couple of songs that we're going to snippet for you, David Cerrero, from your EP, French Jazz Cover Pop Hits. That's what it's called. Yeah. So what, what I did is I took, there were a couple of pop hits like Say So by Doja Cat. I, I love, I'm a huge fan of Doja Cat. And, and I was like, I love these songs, but if I sing a song of Doja Cat, people are going to run away, you know? So I was like, I, I want to find some groove and everything. And I always wanted, there were always a lot of great pop songs that I was at home uh, arranging and producing as a jazz standards and adapting them as a jazz standards. And somehow I had a good feeling of how to turn that song. So I was like, why not do uh, a whole album about it? And, and when I released uh, Say So, people really, really liked it. And I got a really... Uh, um, amazing feedback okay so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna tap into some of these songs we're gonna play a snippet folks and folks you can go on to all these platforms spotify apple music youtube check out some of his videos youtube music pandora and my favorite spot iHeartRadio, and check out david cerebro because i'm telling you some folks his music oh man your music is amazing uh, oh, you're sweet. Thing I like about your music, it's uh, enjoyable to everybody. Mm. Even if you don't speak his language, his native tongue, it doesn't mm. matter. You can actually enjoy the French. The French is like the language of love. Mm. And so when you interpret an American song into French, oh, man. It's like it, a new discovery. You know? it's, it gets hot in and, the room, man. Yeah, but you know, it's all my life I was fascinated by the American accent, American singing and all of that. And, uh, and it's funny now, I think I've sang it so much in English that now I feel weird, you know, uh, unless it's like a Broadway musical, unless it's theatrical, you know, but just singing a pop song now for me is 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 weird you know and unless it's a jazz standard like my way or new york new york you know uh because it's very theatrical but uh but now for the pop i love to sing in french 
it's it's my native language and uh, like by example when you look at an artist like Luis Miguel uh, that I who I really really love he sings in Spanish and uh, he's very successful in his own language um, and uh, what he managed to do is absolutely wonderful that's the kind of stuff I want to do with my own language yeah but so folks this is what we're gonna do we're gonna play a snippet of this folks this song here is called Say so. It's David Cerrero, y'all. <laughs> this is nice. Very, very comforting. Yeah. But I, I, I also was thinking of doing like a, a French Barry White kind of stuff you know where you're talking during the music so that's one of the stuff i i wanted to do like a french barry white is uh, with the jazz background is something sexy i think oh yeah definitely you know jazz mm. is the type of music that is never going mm. to die oh and for sure the thing about with jazz especially for musicians is like you know you just play what comes to your mind Mm. Play what comes to your heart, you know, as long as it sounds good. But yeah, you know, that's the beauty of jazz. Oh, so we're gonna stay it's free. Gonna, yeah. So tell us about the song. Uh, you know what? I don't need to donate. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so to donate, actually, it, it's not um, a U.S. pop song. It's a French pop song, um, and it, it was uh, re- written and released by a Metro Games. You know, so he a lot of he has a big career in the U.S. He's very well known in the U.S. and all over the world. He's a big, big star, and he did that song, uh, a very, very, uh, you know, almost like a ragaton, almost. And I put it with the very jazz with saxophone. And actually, I shot the music video of that song in Miami, and uh, I, I'm still I still haven't released it yet, but hopefully. In the coming weeks, I'm going to to release it. But it was like very, you know, we, we shot it with the woman who, I mean, it, it was really, really beautiful, really. I saw you in Miami. I saw you on Instagram with your videos and your lives from Miami shooting this video. I saw it on Twitter. Ah, you saw some of it. Yeah, actually, but- on my Instagram, you can see when the woman comes around me with the watch and everything. It, it was... It was very, uh, you, you can see actually a shot of it. It oh, came I, out perfectly. I'm looking forward to when you release it for everyone Absolutely to see Because I'm going to tap in. Are you going to put it on your YouTube channel? Yeah, absolutely. It will be on Vivo also. Oh, okay. Vivo David Sudorero. Mm-hmm. I can, yeah. So folks, you got to tap in, man. You got to go to YouTube. You got to check out David Sudorero. You got to check out his plays. You got to oh, check brother. out his musicals, especially the one Thriller. Oh, my God. David Cerrero, that one was amazing. And how you yeah. interpreted Thriller, man. No, it was a good. I, I won um, uh, the, uh, the the Palm Beach uh, Music Award. Um, I won Best Arranger and Producer for that song. Wow. Because it was it was really, really something new to do a thriller like this with the big band with all of that but it worked perfectly and i did also uh beyonce um crazy in love uh also that i rearranged with the jazz style and uh, that's really something i really love you know i'm, I'm telling you something man rod temperton and michael jackson would have been proud when he heard oh, that song. oh my man they would have been they, they would have been like over the moon elated and Thank Michael you, Jackson probably would have said, hey, let me get in the background of that, if you don't mind. Man. Oh, man. We do a whole album just for that. But his, his brother told me that um, basically he, he was prepping. He, he tried to do uh, a jazz album uh, with jazz arrangements, something. And he did some demos of it, but they don't know where they are. He recorded it. Wow. Yeah. Damn, if we could just get those... Those, oh, um, those those demos and then mm. they brought them over to your studio 
Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. I will do something hot with it. Yeah. Oh, I know you would. Uh, All right, so let's get on to that second song, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Davis, we roll, y'all. Come on. Got to tap in. Going over to all platforms. Spotify. Apple Music. YouTube. YouTube Music. Pandora. iHeartRadio. Deezer. The list goes on and on. Wherever is streaming going on, David Cerrero is in the middle of it. And oh, so, you're sweet. Here we go with The Shape of You. Can you tell us about that? Well, The Shape of You is that famous song by uh, Ed Sheeran. And, uh, and I thought he has some jazz feel w- with it, you know. And I rearranged it and, uh, and uh, it turned out to be, to be actually quite good, you know. Yeah, it turned out to be. In excellent. French, in French on top of that. Oh, French is awesome, man. I think mm-hmm. that's the language of love, as I said earlier. Yeah. Love every moment of you. And I, I love how you come underneath yourself. So, like, when you're out there and, you, and you're doing those big notes, those big mm. notes, yeah. then you come in smoothly underneath yeah, yourself. Yeah, that, That's oh, something I, I learned really on how to do very recently because I was so much judged on... Uh, uh, singing, oh, you know, like very loud and everything. And, um, and I learned how to do really, how to masterize, even though, of course, I, I have a, a lot of progress to do all the time, but how to do harmonies and how to do, you know, this little voice that will come around, you know, as a background vocals to kind of sustain my own uh, loud lead voice, you know. Definitely, man. So here is David Suiro in progress. Snippet of it, folks. Shape of You. My man. It's David Suiro, y'all. Come on. Yo, this is really nice. I like it. And you can actually hear all of these tracks on the Let's Chat and Jam Spotify playlist, folks. Yes. Let's chat and jam on Spotify playlist. You can hear all three of those tracks right there from David mm. Cerebro. And also tap in because the top 15 songs on the playlist get to be on the Shiznit list on Instagram for Let's Chat and Jam. So make sure you guys tap in. Tell us some of your experiences you've had since you've been making music. Well, I, um, I, I'm, that's the good thing I had is that I was able to um, to be so eclectic into so many different styles and go from rock to uh, pop to jazz to R and B uh, to writing my own mater- material to uh, opera to uh, um, uh, classical and world music also so. Um, it's it's so eclectic and i realized that uh, the more you can play the m- richer is your your music that's th- that's one thing i definitely realized you're right and the more you play the better you get and i have so much faith in you man you're getting better and better every time you release another track and of course Thank your you. musicals man they are just amazing just your rearrangements, it showcases your creativity as an artist. Because you are an artist, but instead of painting with paint, you paint with words and you paint with sound. And you play with sound because jazz is, a, is the format which gives you that freedom to do so. Like, because certain genres like, let's say, R&B or hip hop, those, those basically, you, you got to, people want to hear certain things rock and roll, certain elements. But with jazz, you can play with the music, you can play with the sounds, you can be free to do so. And that's what makes your stuff so amazing and so relatable. People can listen to your music, comprehend what you're saying, because what you say has substance, it has meaning. And every song that you pick, like let's say you want to do a cover song and you just want to change it up a little bit to give it that David Cerrero touch. Then 
what happens is you take those words and you have meaning behind it. You don't do any song that you like, oh, that's just not for me. No, mm -hmm. that song, you have to be feeling it. And, and you felt that song from Ed Sheeran's Shape of You. You felt it. And you're like, I can do a jazz version of it. And you did, man. And you did. And French at that. Oh, my God, David Cerrero. You are freaking amazing, dude. Thank man. you, brother. <laughs> do you have any advice for the youngins that are coming up that want to do what you're doing? Well, start by doing it. You know, everything you have. Um, I, I realize a lot of the, the new guys, they... They want to do like I wanted to do before, but thank God I was not able to do um, is that today you can basically with your own even cell phone, you can record something and right away release it right away, put it on Spotify and sell it, you know, and people believe that, that the more they release, the more they do stuff, the more something will happen, you know, um, I release a lot of stuff, but I do 10 times more, but I only release about 10% that I, that I do because the rest I'm like, eh, it's not strong enough. And sometimes I wait two, three years be before I take an old project and I kind of uh, reshape it a little bit, you know, and sometimes there are stuff that I did uh, five, six years ago and I'm like, oh, it's so outdated now. Let me remove it, you know? So I will say, do stuff, but don't necessarily release it. But imagine you release it, but create more stuff and improve. You say, okay, I did that. Now I want to do that. Then I want to do that. So that there is a growth. That's very important is to see growth. You got a point, man. This is a lot of new artists that are coming up, including myself, folks, that we get excited because we recorded something and we think it sounds amazing. Of course. And then we decided we're going to release it for the world to hear. And then the world hears it and it falls on crickets. See, nobody knows us, folks. So before we even release songs, we have to build a buzz about ourselves. We have to do promotion about our own music before we even drop any singles. And I think collaborations are great. You know, you're absolutely right, because you have at the beginning to pass the level of the, I would say, the excitement of releasing something. At the beginning, you're like, oh my God, release it. It's so good. It's so good. So what I do usually is I, I, um, I release it on SoundCloud, you know, but as a private uh, link. So I'm like, oh, it's released, you know. And then a month later, I listen to it and I'm like, oh, wait, that is wrong. That I can do better. That I can do better. And then I edit it. And, and try to make it better. Um, so so we, we, we pass, you know, there's a, a friend of mine once told me, I was like, no, no, I have to release it quickly. And a friend of mine said, David, it's not like you have a thousand people down your house waiting for a new song of yours, you know? <laughs> he said, relax, people are busy with something else. So um, and now, really, I, I don't want to do just for the sake of doing. You know, if I do is really something because it takes so much of me now. It takes so much of my health, so much of uh, really a piece of me, really. When, when I do the album Scarface, I put so much work into it. Like it took me years to do, to do it. Like if you hear the arrangements, the brass, the drums, there's even the cymbal. I, I could spend a week uh, for the cymbal, how to, is it psh, or the psh, or just, psh, you know, vroom, you know, you have so many different ways of a symbol or maybe the symbol is too bright. Oh, wait, I listen to it now on another, uh, computer and it sounds different. So let me find something that sounds even everywhere. So it takes so much of you that when I do something, I really want to do something good, but about the promotion and everything. One thing I realized is that when you have a good idea, it doesn't need to be, uh, it, it gets promoted on its own because the idea is so good that people would be like, oh, it's, it's great. But before I used to do so many, even more stuff, but nothing was really like amazing. And uh, I'm not saying that what I do is more amazing now, you know, but 
be, be, before. And then I would spend a fortune on trying to promote it, put all my savings to even myself to go with poster in the streets, you know, and to have five people in the audience, you know. So uh, now I realize that if you have a good concept, if you have a good formula, you know, formula, everybody have their own formula from that includes where you're from, what you know, um, what you do, your own approach, your age, your looks, your heritage, your musical heritage and all this stuff makes a formula like plus minus times two divided by four, whatever that result is you. Even if, um, you know, some people think that, Oh, that minus is a disadvantage, disadvantage. It, it wouldn't be you at the end. You know, when I look by example, at, uh, Eli Tahari, Eli Tahari was, uh, in a refugee camp, you know, uh, he moved to America with less than a hundred dollars. He slept on the benches. I don't think he would worth today half a billion dollar if he wouldn't have stayed on the bench. Cause when you stay on the bench, you're like, man, I have to make it happen. Not in one week, not in a year. It's like now, like, how am I going to do to eat the next meal? You know what I mean? So you have a different, um, I would say, sorry, uh, a different uh, urgency that um, you would have if you are from the nine to five uh, thing. So I would say everybody have the own formula and the best advice is find your own formula because me, I went so, so much around to finally come back to who I really am, you know, but it takes time until I have proven that I can do everything that now I can be myself. I'm digging the vibes, man. Cause mm -hmm. I found this app called loom L U M. Dot L -U -M. FM. Yeah. And I hope posted my music on there. And some of the songs I posted on there, you can't find anywhere else, only on that platform. And I did that because I wanted to see what people thought, you know, because you alone, you could post whatever you want to post on there, take it down, put it back, take it down, put it back, and also re-edit it, like re-put another song in its place, you know, a better version of the song you made. It's, just, it's amazing, man, what Loom can do for you. And people on Loom, like people that are your fans, they can support you by gifting you loom notes. Each 200 loom notes is equivalent to one US dollar. So if you got your fan base to check out loom and download the app and say, hey, check out my music on loom. And if you want, you could also gift me and support my career. And, you know, people love to support their favorite artists. They love to do that. That's what they're there for. That's why they're called fans or fanatics. They love the artists that they're following. And once they get a personal connection with you, that's when they really start to take off and things really start to happen. Like they'll buy your tickets. They'll buy your merchandise. They'll buy your records. Instead of going to stream it on Spotify, they'll buy it on iTunes. They'll buy it on Google. But well, there's no Google Play anymore. But when there was, you could buy music off of Google Play. And I'll tell you something, folks. David Cerrero, you have a fan base that loves the shiznit out of you because oh, you're, you're doing sweet. so many good things for the people. Because you are a people man. You're an entertainer. Oh, thank you. An all-around artist. It's amazing what you do. Do you have any burning desires? Uh, yeah, I mean, first of all, to continue what I do uh, because we are in... Uh, in a society that anything can happen to you, like even your close entourage uh, can turn against you. Uh, even your people you thought were your friend can turn against you. And uh, someone could take a phrase out of concept, uh, out of context and, and try to basically uh, uh, to kill you on the public place, you know, so I'm, I want to continue and nothing will stop me. I, I always say I was born uncancelable, you know, <laughs> you know, with the cancel culture. So I was yeah, born uncancelable. So, so uh, I was already canceled before I was born, you know. 
<laughs> I cannot be canceled again, you know. So I want to continue as long as, as possible. And uh, now I'm in a place where I've done what I wanted to do. Um, it was for me to be on stage was already like going to the moon, you know. So for me, I've been on stage. I'm happy. Um, I've done some great things. My, uh, my shows were able to benefit a lot of artists um, and benefit a lot of, uh, um, I think, also audience member who had a good time, the time of an evening, and also uh, to um, benefit also nonprofits and people who uh, cannot afford the, an evening at the theater and uh, support orphanage. I support villages of uh, um, whether it's kids or, or women who had uh, uh, unfortunate uh, things. I'm not going to talk about the, the ugly stuff that can happen, unfortunately, but the uh, bad, bad things. So, and medical research and all of that. So, at the end of the day, it's all, uh, it's all amazing. But my burning desire now, to be honest with you, is to go to Paris to see my father because I haven't seen him since COVID. It's been a year and a half. So that's my, my biggest burning desire. But the, the, the frontiers, you know, the, the customs are, are closed between uh, Europe and, and the U.S. So... I hope they will reopen, but I understand why they're closed also, you know, it makes sense, you know, so that's the only way to get out of it, you know, to get out of this COVID, you know, so, and, and the next burning desire is coming next opportunity. There is one of the biggest French musical of all time, one of the most successful ever um, that I decided to adapt in English. You know, and I had to work very hard and we recorded it and now I'm recording the vocals. Uh, I cannot tell you which one yet, but it's, it, I will tell you after the, <laughs> once we stop the recording, but it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm recording now the vocals of that musical and that would be something huge. Like people are going to talk about it. It's huge. And uh, so, yeah, it's to continue. And that starts one relationship on that musical now leads to another one and now another big French success. They want me to adapt it for Broadway. So it's, it's all that, that spin. And I hope that that spin will continue and that I would always have the desire and the courage to, to do new um, um, entrepreneurship uh, in that uh, very challenging uh, industry, you know, and most important to have the health to do it because with COVID, we saw that how much health is so important and how much, boom, like this, we can die out of nothing. You know, you can stop breathing and, you know, so I want to continue as much as, uh, as, uh, as possible, you know, so that's my biggest burning desire and peace among people, for God's sake, you know, I started to see people created communities and our communities started to separate themselves, you know, and uh, among the communities, people started to create their own communities. So instead of all being one, you know, so I hope people will come more as one instead of, Oh, I'm part of that community. I'm part of that community. So I always say our differences is our chance to be together. You're right. I look at it. I, th I think I look at it this way. We're all from the same energy source. Just because we're all looking different as human beings doesn't mean we're not all related because we all come from the same source, which most people would call God. Mm. We all come from the one, the ultimate creator. And he sent out from himself. He broke himself off and put us all out there so we can learn lessons and get back to him. And of course, if you can't get back to him, it's because you haven't learned your lessons. All I know is this, America and the world. It is I, MC Andrew Love. This is Les Chat and Jam, and this is my special guest, David Cerebro. This brother here is one of the most talented and gifted artists I have ever met in my lifetime. Oh, you're the sweetest. This brother you here- You are too, you are too, brother. Well, I appreciate it, man. This brother here, 
He is a playwright. He is a songwriter. He is a singer. He is an actor. He is, but you know what? He does everything. I mean, there's so many things he does do that it would take me a lifetime to list all his resume accolades. This brother here is an award-winning artist. The, this brother here is one of the amazing persons. And he has his own show, Culture News, which you can tune in on iHeartRadio and Spotify. And I'll tell you something. He brings out these guests and he sees the best in them. He asks them these hard-hitting questions. Questions that make these artists look bigger and better than they would have if they didn't come to his show. Oh, well, so same I, for you. I have well, to learn from you. <laughs> you do well, it you, better. <laughs> you did it first. And I think I'm learned from you, my brother. Oh, my man. Yes. So can you tell the folks where they can find you? Well, um, on Instagram, David Cerrero, on uh, Facebook, uh, David Cerrero, or my official page, David Cerrero Opera, and uh, on YouTube, you know, and um, my music is on Spotify, is on Apple Music, is on all the platforms, and uh, uh, I have some uh, theatrical shows that are actually on Amazon Prime Video, so feel free to check them out. So these shows were kind of filmed originally for uh, ar archival purposes but um with amazon we decided to release them and uh, um very excited the part of my growth you know the part of my history of course today i do much better but it's they're very interesting because they're part of my uh, i would say um history in a way you know i'm definitely going to tap in now that i know thank you brother prime video i'm going to tune in Since you've been here for the first time, you have now become part of the Let's Chat and Jam fan, which means you don't have to wait for me to contact you and say, hey, David Cerrero, come to my show. Nah, you can tap into me on my DMs and say, hey, Drew, I have a new project and I would like to talk about it on your show. And then, I, of course, I will get my calendar out. I will dig it up and I will look for a date and I will say, deal. You are now on the show. That's part of the perks of being part of the Let's Chat and Jam fam. So I want to say thank you for coming into the show. Thank I you, my brother. Yes, man. I do appreciate your time. I appreciate everything you do. You are one of the most amazing persons I've ever met. And people, oh. you need to tap into David's reroll because he's one of the best. And I mean every word I say. My man. So you stay safe. Are you in Manhattan right now? Yes, brother. Well, you stay in safe in, the, in Manhattan. And Thank everybody you, else, you guys stay safe. And just remember, if you have a dream, go for it. Because nothing can stop you but yourself. Mm. And nothing beats a failure but a try. Mm. Peace out, folks. Thanks for watching. And if you like what you saw, please subscribe to the channel. Also, like and share the content as well as hit the notification icon so you don't miss any A Conversation With series right here on Let's Chat and Jam.